All right, welcome back. We are doing another video, another electric bike, this time a fat bike. This time, maybe one you haven't seen or heard of before. This is the Moose. So Moose is a Canadian brand based in Quebec area or somewhere around there, it doesn't really matter. But they make gravel bikes, they make fat bikes, they make a lot of cool fixies and commuters, and they are now making an electric fat bike. Honestly, it looks fantastic. It's running the Shimano stuff, so you know it's gonna be reliable. And price-wise and part-wise, they are doing very well with themselves. So they only have the one model, and it's running the Shimano Dior drivetrain system, full one by 12, so it's gonna shift really, really nicely. Obviously, it's got the electric motor on the front, so you're gonna have that big chain ring on the front to operate that, as they all are now, a good ratio of power to kind of acceleration ratio. Attached to that front one is the older, but still used EP8000 motor. So this is not the EP8, this is the 8000. Big differences to it is it's slightly bigger, but they've rotated it upwards so you don't really notice the size of it, which is really nice. They did put a little protector there on the underside so it will prevent things from just bashing directly into it, which is excellent. Acceleration wise, I think the 8000 motor is a little more aggressive. It's not like it's terrible or bad. Just compared to the new EP8, the 8000 definitely kicks a little bit more. It's still manageable, it's still controllable, it's still good. If you rode the new motor compared to this older motor back and forth, that is the difference you'd notice. Battery is obviously in the down tube here. It's pretty beefy, but it's not super offensive. Charge port is also down here, so you're able to charge it with the Shimano plug. Everything is Shimano, so that's nice and reliable that way. Battery is fully removable. It is locked in there. There is a key port, but you just take off that cover and then you can take it off for storage. Obviously being a fat bike, you might be using it in the winter, but you might not necessarily want to leave this outside when you're not using it with the battery in. That is a concern for it. This is called the E-Fat Bike. It makes no reference to the XXL. This is a side large. Even the small says XXL. I have no idea what it references. What I do know is this is a great location for the power button. I see a lot of them put them down at the bottom there. Obviously to save wiring instead of wiring it up, but it's really inconvenient. Top and center works really well. Obviously it's the standard Shimano power button. Uses the standard Shimano console there. So that works good. Small tells you your odometer, battery level, speed, all that kind of fun stuff all ran off the controller on the side. And this is the flush mount one. So there's a few different ones with different kind of textures to them. Ones with a bit more ridge to it. This one's pretty flat and rounded, works well. No real complaints. You could always switch this to one with a bit beefier of buttons if you were finding, which with gloves, I wonder if you'd appreciate something a little more aggressive, but maybe with gloves, it's almost easier. Grips are a double-sided lock-on, so that's nice. They put on something decent there. It is kind of a no-name one, but they do have a bit of squish to them. Shimano hydraulic disc brakes, and these are actually really good. Um, they are just single piston, but you have an adjustment to the level, which is nice, especially with gloves, you might be changing this around. They're still a good setup, it's not like that bad. Essentially, the best way to explain this bike is they took tried, true, and tested reliable parts from Shimano, all good, not the best, but all excellent, put them on a fat bike and produced it. Geometry-wise, it's comfortable. This is a large, I'm about 5'11", and it fits excellently. I don't find the reaches too far, I don't find the standovers too much. I think it's a good position. It's not too aggressive, it's not too slack. It feels like it's gonna be able to handle pretty much anything in the snow and be able to go anywhere we want. It does come with the V-Tire Snow Avalanche, 27 and a half by 4.5 inch wide tires, studdable, so if you start really commuting with this or needing a lot of extra traction, you will appreciate that, and I think that's key especially with an electric fat bike, you might be traveling a little bit faster than your regular fat bike once did. No dropper post on this one, but obviously could be added. And they do a 
pretty good job with cable setup. They send out some kind of wiring stuff to just clean it up, which is nice. So Moose has done an excellent job with this one. Like I say, geometry, not too aggressive, not too slack. Part spec is very good, but not amazing. It's not complainable about though. Rack mounts on the rear, nothing on the front for rack mounts, but it'll work just fine. Overall, if you're looking for an electric fat bike, this checks all the boxes. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this. You could add features, suspension and seat post. Not as easy, the suspension, you would need a new hub and obviously it's not as quick and easy as some options, but it's doable. And really, lots of people don't even ride suspension on their electric fat bikes anyway, so it's not like a critical part. Price-wise, you're around 6,000 Canadian dollars, so very competitive, I think. The closest thing we have with the Bosch system is the Moustache EFAT bike and you're adding, you know, $2,500 or $2,000 more dollars on top of this. All you get is a dropper post and suspension, which geometry wise and looks, maybe it's a little cleaner, but they've just taken a really simple bike and turned it into a reliable electric bike with reliable parts. And I think potentially more people should consider doing this because this is a category that's gonna grow really fast. Performance in the winter, they say minus 20 and higher Celsius is pretty similar. You will lose a little bit of range. Below minus 20, you're gonna lose, you know, more significant amount of range. The colder you get, the more significant it's gonna be. But anywhere minus 20 or around, you're gonna get some good range to it and good performance out of that motor and you're gonna have a good time on this fat bike. All right, so that's the end of the video. It's a basic one and honestly, I like it. It looks good. It performs well. It's definitely not a race winning machine. It's definitely not the most ultimate commuter, but is it the perfect in the middle for everybody bike? I think so, honestly. If you're looking for an electric fat bike and you don't have anything specific you wanna do with it, you just want an electric fat bike which will perform, react, and has quality parts, the Moose fat bike is definitely something you should look at. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Talk to you later.